Students, families, counselors, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan and Cache's virtual college exploration program. This program is in partnership with the College Admissions Collaborative, highlighting engineering and technology, the Cache. These are STEM-based uh, programs. A few housekeeping items before we begin with today's panel. First and foremost, you are encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see in your screen. When you send a question, it gets sent to all of our panelists, and they will work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session. If you have a question about a specific institution, please make sure to indicate that in your question. So rather than saying, what's your campus community like? Say, hey, Harvey Mudd, what is your campus community like? That way it indicates for Harvey Mudd to respond directly to that question. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So any questions you do have need to be typed in through that Q&A. This is one of 50 panel presentations and individual information sessions that we are running through this evening that are all STEM focused. We encourage you to check out strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM and sign up for additional programs. When you sign up today, you receive a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this virtual event. And we are recording this session and all of the sessions and the recordings will be made available at that exact same place that you registered, strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM shortly after the conclusion of each session. So we encourage you to check those out. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Peter Osgood. I am the Director of Admission at Harvey Mudd College, and we're going to help offer you a session we hope we'll, you'll get a lot out of. We have a wonderful array of presenters. It won't be a lot of admission persons. You're going to hear from three faculty members, a current student, and two alumni to describe how this type of learning uh, will may, may work for you. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, we're not going to do it any, we're going to be very brief talking about each individual college and that'll probably be a minute at most. But you can go ahead with your questions and to repeat what Zach said, if there are specific college questions, please identify that college for us. So uh, please go to the next slide. And first, what is project-based learning? So a high school student has probably encountered some sort of projects that you've had to work on. Uh, frequently in high school, the projects are where, ones where one person, probably you, did most of the work and others were given credit. That will not fly in college. Those days are going to be gone. Um, you will find also that there's a range of areas of the curriculum that have project-based learning. You can have projects in history or arts courses and things like that. And that's fine, but frequently it's one person doing the job or working closely on an independent project, closely with a, with a teacher or professor. This project-based learning is found specific, very, very clear, uh, commonly in all STEM disciplines. Research is an easy example of that. But, um, and it also depends on the objectives of the class, but project-based learning is essential in fields like engineering and technology. And that's part of what we're going to try and communicate to you today. So we go to the next slide. Why is it important? Well, it's a great way to learn because you're interacting with things in a physical way, a tangible way. Um, it's also essential that the teams that are working on these projects, and almost invariably they will be teams, that team will be repeated throughout today's session, so that solutions can, come, can be better because you have a diverse group working on the problem. Uh, we want you to learn by doing, and part of learning by doing is frankly failing to succeed. There's going to be a lot of errors along the way. You giggle, you pick yourself up, you try again. Uh, it's an exciting experience. It's an exciting way to learn, and you tend to, it tends to be embedded deeper if you've interacted in this way rather than hearing, say, a lecture or something. The final thing that this does is it cements relationships between fellow team members, sometimes with your sponsor, whether that's in an internship, a capstone experience with a professor. Uh, those are all really a, a, a awesome uh, opportunities for students to, to nurture their, their future development. So with that, I'm gonna close my comments with this welcome, and I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna give you a framework for how project-based learning is trying to educate students. Let me first introduce Jill Walsh, she is a professor from St. Martin's in the beautiful state of Washington. Thank you. Jill, take it away.
As Peter said, I am a assistant professor at St. Martin's University. I'm a structural engineering professor. Um, and I'm going to give you the professor's perspective of project-based learning uh, goals that we want to accomplish with it and how we accomplish. <clears throat> St. Martin's is a small liberal arts school in beautiful Pacific Northwest Washington. And we have rigorous engineering programs that are growing and supported by modern facilities and dynamic young faculty who are guided by the Benedictine values of community and respect. The next slide shows some of the accolades our um, school has received. Um, one that we are proud of is the first Purple Heart University in Washington State, as well as the number one return on investment among private universities in Washington State. And like I said, I'm gonna give you the professor's perspective on performance-based learning, why we feel it's a valuable learning mechanism and what it looks like and how we implement it just at St. Martin's University. And you can probably extrapolate that it'll, there'll be similar and additional modes in other universities. Um, the next slide sort of summarizes um, the goals that we have with faculty goals with project-based learning. So seeing a project to completion forces students to learn strategies to work together effectively and efficiently, as well as clarifies how all the parts that they learn in classes come together within a project. So when students get to build something, whether it's from the actual tying of steel rebar to using the equations that they learned in class to predict a failure, hands-on experience stays with students well past graduation. Um, in these project-based um, lessons, we recruit industry professionals to work with students and the students can develop their communi technical communication skills, um, such as report writing, presentation speaking, and even email writing. Email writing is a technical skill that um, a lot of people, uh, it, it's a really good tool to understand how to use efficiently and effectively. Um, and also contract drawings and contract writing. So in this sense, project-based learning helps sort of bridge the transition from the academics and everything that you're learning in your classes to the profession and develop skills that can't be taught in a lecture classroom setting. And the next slide shows an example um, from a capstone senior design course. So in this course, in this project, students worked as a team to design a bridge that rep would replace a culvert. Um, the students visited conducted a site visit they accompanied they were accompanied by an industry sponsor in this case it was the washington department of fish and wildlife the students performed channel flow analysis bridge design and prepared final technical drawings and a professional report now don't be scared this sounds like a lot but you the students were in frequent contact with the project sponsor and the faculty to guide the process and they encountered personality conflicts, they had to meet scheduled deadlines, and they had to apply the theories that they were learning in the classes and communicate the design, which is a um, valuable and very important tool. And the next slide sh shows other ways that we've implemented project-based learning. So it can occur during, in addition to senior capstone courses, it can occur during um, via industry sponsored competitions, professional society participation. The slide shows um, the upper right corner is where the students and the faculty were meeting with their mentors. Uh, the bottom right is the big beam competition. This is an industry sponsored competition. And then the photo on the left is, um, or the farthest left is the concrete canoes. And that's an extra project that the students at school at St. Martin's did with the American Society of Civil Engineers and we mounted ours in um, some pedestals along our walkway. So um, designing, building, testing to failure provides students opportunities to work together and gain an appreciation for the scale of their designs, the power of theoretical equations to adequately predict behavior, to develop confidence in students' abilities and realize the power of the educational foundation they have developed. So that gives a brief overview of benefits of project-based learning from a faculty perspective and how we implement it just at SMU, St. Martin's University. Uh, next, Jocelyn from Wentworth will present the student perspective of performance-based learning. Thank you, Jill. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Frechette. I am a current student at Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston, Massachusetts. 
In the next slide, you'll see some stats on who we are and we, where we are. So we are a private coeducational college founded in 1904 in Boston, Massachusetts. We are about 4,500 students, both undergraduate and masters. We mainly are in engineering and design. So um, we practice a lot of project-based learning that way. Um, hold on, we are a couple slides back. Um, and that's how we practice project-based learning. One of the biggest way we, we practice project-based learning, you can see in the next slide, is through cooperative education. Every Wentworth student is required to, ha to have two co-ops, one in the fall of your senior year and then one in the spring of your junior year with an optional co-op in the end of your sophomore year. So this gives students the opportunity to work with different companies and be on the job and work as a professional. And you can take that co-op anywhere in the entire country or even across the world. My co-op opportunities, I worked in Iowa and I am from Boston in Massachusetts area, which was an awesome opportunity. And I mainly worked in Boston and New Hampshire. So you can see on the slide, um, some of the recent co-op employers as well as the co-op program. And instead of graduating in the typical spring semester, we actually graduate in the summer. So it's a little unique, but you still graduate on time with everyone else in your class. So a little bit about me in the next slide. I am a electrical engineering major with a minor in physics. I actually will be graduating this Sunday. So very exciting. And some of my experiences with project-based learning. Um, from year one, day one, we were right in the lab. We were thrown into an intro to engineering course. And my first lab was an electrical engineering module. So we actually got to build small electric cars and code them to detect different floor colors and turn accordingly. So that was my real first introduction to engineering. And then my second semester freshman year, we had the opportunity to go into our machine shop in a class called the Fundamentals of CAD and CAM, computer-aided drafting and computer-aided manufacturing. And so in computer-aided manufacturing, we actually got these aluminum blocks and we learned how to use a CNC mill and we got to engrave our initials in G code or machine code. And then after that, once we got the hang of learning how to use machine code, we got to engrave an uh, engraving of our choice. So that was really cool and it was an opportunity to get hands-on. And not only are you getting hands-on from the first year, you will remain hands-on throughout your entire undergraduate career, career at Wentworth. So in every single course that I've taken, I've always had a lab section and most lab sections will actually have labs every single week and it will culminate to a final project. So one final project that absolutely stands out to me was in my analog circuit design class. We had to create a auto equalizer only using analog components, no digital microprocessors whatsoever. And it basically just balances an audio signal that comes in and you can adjust the frequencies accordingly. And that really taught me how to use the nuances, how to learn the nuances of hardware that you wouldn't necessarily see or view in a textbook, which was really an awesome opportunity. And then right now I'm just finishing up my senior capstone. It was an interdisciplinary project with professors from three different departments, electrical, biomedical, and industrial design. And our, we were tasked with creating a new photolithography system for our nanotechnology lab to make it more user friendly. And it was really an awesome opportunity to work with different personalities and learn different ways of learning. So we actually got to learn from an industrial designer or a product designer's perspective, and as well as many other perspectives. And we're really hoping with that project that we're going to be enabling other students learning. So our hands-on project will hopefully in the future enable someone else's hands-on project. So it was an awesome op opportunity. We're actually gonna be publishing to a conference in a couple of days. Next slide. So with the co-op program, I had an awesome opportunity to work with three different companies. I got to work with the MITRE Corporation in Bedford, Massachusetts as a sensor systems engineering intern. I worked at BA Systems as a hardware intern as in New Hampshire. And then my last co-op, I actually worked at Collins Aerospace as a platform systems engineer. And it really gave me the opportunity to learn how to be a professional in a professional atmosphere. And right after graduation in about two weeks, I will be working at Raytheon as an electrical engineer in their microelectronics department. So I really think project-based learning is really effective and it really learn, really teaches you how to be an efficient engineer and really be hands-on and know how to use things. I really think project-based learning has brought me up to the next level and where I'm gonna go in the future. 
So our next presenters are Peter and Peter and Kira from Harvey Mudd. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to speak very briefly about Harvey Mudd College if you don't know it. It's a very small school, about 900 students in Southern California, about 35 miles east of LA. We are a member of the Claremont Colleges Consortium, a unique environment where there are a family of colleges across the street from each other. All of our majors are in math, science, or engineering. We have a, you can see from, here, from this slide, our mission, and the mission drives all of our decisions and particularly the curriculum. So we insist that students have a broad STEM education. One of those features is that our majors tend to be very broad. We have one major for engineering as opposed to several. Uh, every student also commits to taking a, a great number of courses in humanities, social sciences, and arts. And then the major uh, will, you get to choose after your first year, no pressure to select a major early. Research is required by our institution. It's a very tight knit community. We are pulled together by a student led honor code. Our unofficial rule in the dining hall is that every table can accommodate N plus one. Uh, we're residential. We do not have Greek life. If you're eager for Greek life, you'll have to be content with math and physics. That's where you see deltas and epsilons and sigmas and lambdas. The community that we have is the best part of the college. And we have a great representative of that community with a recent graduate, Kira Fava. Kira, who's going to talk to you about uh, Harvard Med College and her experiences as an engineer. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, so my name's Kira, and uh, like Peter just said, I just graduated from Harvey Mudd this past spring with a degree in engineering. And yes, like he said, that is general engineering. Uh, I also have a concentration in philosophy since we are a liberal arts college as well. And I played soccer with our CMS soccer team. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so that's just a little bit about me. As for project-based learning at MUD, I have had a super hands-on curriculum since my freshman year. Uh, one of the first engineering courses that I took was engineering design and manufacturing, where you get to work in the machine shop and experience working with mills and lathes and drills, um, like really hands-on early in your career. Um, and so I have plenty of friends who found homes in the machine shop uh, because we got that exposure right away, whether they became shop proctors or continue to take manufacturing classes. Um, that was one great part about having that exposure. On top of that, with that class, we did several design projects. And in that class, um, we usually had teams where we not only learned engineering design skills, but we learned how to work in teams as well as um, were given strategies for working through various conflicts and dealing with different communication styles in order to maximize effectiveness of being on those teams. Um, so I've really appreciated that and used those skills throughout other classes as well. Uh, and so that wasn't the only time that we kind of got thrown into the deep end. Come sophomore year, you get on a team of four and have to design an underwater robot, um, which at the end of the semester, you actually drive down to the beach and toss it in the ocean to take real data. So again, although we had relatively little engineering experience uh, this early on sophomore year, we learned a lot just by being held responsible for a delivered product at the end of the semester. And you spend a lot of time learning how to learn and learning how to work through mistakes as you spend a lot of time in the lab with peer tutors and proctors as well as professors there to help walk you through it as you are you know learning on the fly and on the go. Uh, so later on in the curriculum the project-based learning also continues. Uh, two of my advanced technical courses, one on microprocessors and then one on analog circuit design, were completely lab-based. So each week, instead of turning in a written problem set, you give, uh, you're given a mini project or what we call a lab, where you have to build or code something, test it, and verify results, and do a short write-up. Um, that's not to say you don't have in-class time with your professor giving a short lecture, but each, each one of those is accompanied with a lab each week. And so there's a lot of applications of digital and analog design that I already have experience with because those classes had me doing things every week instead of just reading or writing or getting lectured about the material. Um, and kind of like Jocelyn said, I actually also got to do an audio equalizer, um, but we made ours visual because I did do mine for my microprocessors class. And so we did ours with digital design. Um, and that was what I got to do for a final project in that class to kind of be the cumulative uh, display of everything we had learned previously in our other labs. Um, and so the last part of the curriculum that I'd say really embodies project-based learning is our senior capstone program called Clinic. And all engineering majors as well as computer science majors are required to participate in Clinic. 
as opposed to doing a traditional senior thesis. Um, and so just to point out, that's not just for engineering majors, other majors are required CS and CS math. And if you're biochem or physics, you can also choose to join a clinic program that's relevant to your field of study, um, as opposed to doing thesis, um, both of which are great opportunities for research, but uh, it's, it's just uh, another place where students can get hands on. So with clinic, you're working in teams of four to six on a project for an outside sponsor. So this past year, I had friends working with Google or NASA or Nike, just to name a few of the big ones. Um, and the benefits of this program are huge in that you get experience working with a team um, on a larger scale project that's, you know, all year long, making and following schedules, working with a budget, as well as experience working on a project from start to finish again, and being held responsible for a deliverable or a prototype by the end of the year that you're not just going to have end with your class, it's going to continue on and serve a purpose in the real world as you give it to this company or organization. Um, and so it's very rewarding to work on, work on those projects that serve a purpose. And for me, I have had experience working with cancer diagnostics and treatments with City of Hope Hospital, which has been really, really fun and builds a lot of confidence and enthusiasm when you get to do those projects. Uh, next slide, please. So the last thing I'll say is that these programs, uh, with these programs, uh, it's not uncommon for people to make a lot of connections that open up for opportunities for internships or full-time positions. It's really common to have an internship the summer after junior year, um, which is another avenue for hands-on project-based learning where you actually get to join industry or do research. Uh, personally, I spent my summer internship last year. Uh, I found it by chatting with an alumni at our career fair and then making connections that way. Um, and other people will do summer research with professors on campus, but with all those various experience, I think they serve you really well, um, not to just give you technical experience, but to build confidence and exposure. Um, and so I think that's how I've seen the benefits of project-based learning in my curriculum at Harvey Mudd. Uh, up next will be Zach from Olin. Thanks, Kira. I'm gonna talk about Olin College of Engineering. A lot like Harvey Mudd, we are a small, tech-focused institution, but we're on the opposite side of the country. We are just outside the city of Boston. We're very, very small. We have only about 350 students in total. Next slide. So, hi, my name is Zach. I'm actually a graduate of Olin College. I graduated back in 2014, but I'm also rejoining the faculty. So I'm actually there now, uh, and I'm gonna, be I'm gonna be teaching starting this fall. Uh, next slide. So at Olin, we think of learning uh, probably a little bit differently than a lot of other institutions. We think of learning as being very experimental. And what I mean by that is that we as faculty are not expecting to get it right the first time. I remember as a student, I felt that it was expected of me to let my professors know when things either are or are not working for me as a student. And so now as a faculty member, I'm kind of keeping that in mind that I'm expecting my students to let me know, like, hey, this lesson really isn't working for me, or we really need to adjust things. Our learning is also very hands-on. About three quarters of our classes actually involve projects. So project-based learning is something that we as an institution have decided works really well. And we've invested a lot in terms of building a curriculum around this mode of education. I also think that this is just a really fun way to learn. Uh, at Olin, I remember as uh, coming from high school and entering into college, I didn't really know what a mill was or a lathe or a CNC or any of this crazy stuff. But because we had courses that gave me the opportunity to work with a lot of these things hands on, I got to learn a lot in a very short period of time. Next slide. I think it's useful to see a pretty clear A-B distinction behind a more traditional way of teaching engineering and what a more project-based approach looks like. So over here on the left, we have a traditional lecture hall. So this is the way engineering is taught in a lot of institutions across the country. Hundreds of people sitting in a room, having one person talk at you for say two hours at a time. Project-based learning looks very different. If you just walk into a classroom, you're more likely to see something on the right here where the students, you can see on the blackboard, they've done the math, but now they're working on taking that math and actually putting it into practice. So here, these students are actually 
designing boat hulls and they're trying to design boats that will actually float. So they've done the math and now they're trying to put those equations into action and see if they can actually create things that will work. Next slide. I think a lot of other folks on, a lot of my colleagues on this panel already did a great job talking about the benefits of project-based learning. So I wanna talk about one more aspect that's a little bit different, which is the effects that project-based learning has on things like the student culture. So I'm just gonna take you through a little story about my time as, uh, as a student at Olin. So in the bottom left here, these are pictures coming from my first year. So in, in your first year fall semester at Olin, you do a class called Design Nature. And this class takes you through the whole process of the engineering design process. So coming from identifying a group of people that you're designing a solution for, understanding what they need, and then using that information to inform the thing that you actually build. And so we're given the, uh, the target user group of actually fourth grade children. So our job is to build a fun toy that they can play with. And what you can see down here is that we decided to make a remote control hamster balls that you know, children could go and drive around. It was a fun thing to play with. Frankly, I remember being a, just out of high school at this point and not really feeling like I could contribute on this project team much at all, just based on the experience that I didn't have coming out of high school. But working with a lot of other students with more experience and who were very supportive, I started to build up a sense that, yeah, I can actually do some stuff and I can actually build things. And towards the middle here, I think that this contributes to building up really a strong collegial collaborative culture among the students. Another thing that we do as Olin students is we're heavily involved in our own admissions process. So we, we have another project that we all do as a class, which is we help to put on our admissions procedures. So Candidates Weekend is part of our application process where we bring everyone who makes the paper cut in terms of applying to the school to campus. We give you a taste of what it feels like to be an Oliner. And so actually here, we as the students are having a lot of fun putting together these kinds of activities, trying to give you a sense of what it feels like to be an Olin student. So we end up building this really collaborative culture. And I think since we get so used to doing projects all the time, it just kind of gets worked into our blood in a sense. So the bottom right here is actually not from a class, We've got this thing that some seniors who are really crazy decide to try to redo all of design nature in 24 hours. So the idea being, well, as a first year, it took us, say, two or three months to get through this whole project. But we've gone through all of this training. Can we do the same thing, but just in 24 hours? And so here, these are some pictures from a case where we decided we're going to go from coming up with a concept, sketching out ideas, prototyping and actually building some kind of working mechanism all within a day. And I think this underscores what's different about project-based learning, where it's a genuinely compelling way to do learning. And so here, even in cases where we didn't have to do any sort of deliverable for a particular class, we, the students, decided, you know what, we just want to build something. We just want to be engaged in the process of doing engineering. And I think that that joy is something that really comes out of this mode of instruction. So I believe David is going to take us through a Q&A now. So if you've got questions, please feel free to put them into the uh, chat window. Um, and I see a couple of school specific questions that hopefully uh, the faculty can answer on those. Uh, in the meantime, uh, perhaps uh, one of our uh, recent graduates could talk about how employers looked at their projects when they were applying for jobs. Jocelyn, would you like to tackle that? Yeah, I can take that. When I was going for interviews, I started my job search really early because that's just the type of person I am. But uh, when I was starting my job search, my first interview, they had me going through every single internship project I worked worked on 
up to the minor detail. So I feel like that's really important. And then another interview I had, they asked me a question about my freshman design project. So I think project-based learning really gets you the opportunity to show off your skills as well as how to communicate them. So I think when, when employers are looking for a new hire, they wanna see people that already have been hands-on as well as um, had the opportunity to work on these types of projects. So it was actually kind of came in really as an important factor when I was um, job searching. Thank you. Um, there's a question in the Q&A on how project-based learning applies to majors that are less hands-on, such as biology and chemistry. Um, I, may, I may take a whack at that. The, um, in all of the STEM fields, uh, students learn by, by doing, and these courses are all lab-based courses. Um, for example, in biology, upper division biology, there's an awful lot of work done with dissection um, and uh, other experiments with, in, in chemistry. I think the difference is, is that in the sciences, you do less design, you're doing more exploration for understanding. But in the engineering fields, uh, as well as computer science, you are creating something that's going to be useful, about building on what you've learned in the science courses. So that was a good question. Um, does any, I see a question in the chat window on, are there any disadvantages to working in a project-based environment? Uh, Zach, do you want to take a whack at that? I could try. I mean, I'll, I'll admit that I'm a true believer when it comes to things like project-based learning. I, I'd actually want to hear some folks from Harvey and Bud weigh in on this too, but at least on the very, very theoretical type subjects. Say I'm thinking going off to uh, pure mathematics for graduate school. Uh, there might be just more derivation and more sort of proof machinery that one needs that as far as I know, it's taught in a more traditional kind of lecture-based approach. Um, but I know that Harvey Mudd, I think actually has, I mean, y'all actually offer a major in mathematics. So I, I'd like to give you a chance to respond to that. Um, I can try to speak to it a little bit. So, I mean, just thinking about some of the math classes I took to start with. So some of what's required of MUD is you come in, you take some calculus, um, linear algebra, multivariable. And I specifically mem remember, I think it was for a differential equations class. Um, even that we had kind of some project-based learning in the sense that I remember our final project was in a team of four, think of, you know, some application of this math and do a presentation on it. And so we took what we had learned in our differential equations class to do a model for um, traffic on the highway and getting onto the highway and meet how metering works. Um, and I did that with a group of people. We did some research and then we did an application with our math. And um, that is, is earlier on, you know, in your math career, I do think when you get into potentially being a math major and doing more proofs um, and, and more uh, theoretical math that it doesn't super lend its hand to uh, necessarily project-based learning because it is more theoretical. But I can say that from the start there um, with my core classes in math, we still did applications um, because as you know, math uh, is required of probably all these institutions to some extent because it is the basis of uh, doing, you know, engineering or physics or whatever it may be. Um, so I think there's a lot of applications earlier on, but once you get theoretical, it's harder to make those uh, hands-on applications. Thank you. Um, Dr. Walsh, there's a question from a community college student who wants to transfer to an engineering degree and wants to know if it's too late compared with freshman students to start hands-on projects. Could you take a, a shot at answering that, please? Sure. Um, absolutely not. It's never too late. Um, community college wanted to transfer an engineering. It's never too late. Um, hands-on projects. So you're, if your capstone design is going to be your senior class, so that'll be your senior design class, um, 
And you can also get involved in the Amer like um, professional societies, such as American Society of Civil Engineers, if you're interested in civil engineering. And all the other disciplines have their own societies as well, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And um, I think Jocelyn said she was in the Society of Women Engineers. And they all have different sort of projects. And there's, there's always opportunity time. It's never too late. Uh, thanks, Dr. Walsh. Um, Peter, there's a question on gap years from, from Megan Lipsman. Uh, would you maybe be willing to talk about that from an emissions perspective? Okay. Uh, gap years, uh, my perspective on that is it's a great ex learning experience. The student gets to explore all kinds of different directions that they had uh, not had the flexibility to pursue while they were in, in their secondary education. Uh, part of the question also is that will the student's chances be improved? I, I can't say that with certainty, but I think the student will probably be able to present an application that gives a much clearer focus on why that school is a particularly good fit for the student and will pay a lot of attention to that. I think the idea of finding a good fit institution for the student and, and, and is for the student and, and for the institution is a really important um, part of our selection. But what I can't tell is what the applicant pool is going to be like the next year. And uh, I think this, this year in particular, for a lot of you students, I'm going to go off on a different tangent. This is a year where there's going to be a lot of grace and consideration given to applicants because we know how uncertain and how difficult it has been to do what used to be fairly familiar processes and that so many students won't be able to take tests and their coursework in their spring term was tremendously disrupted. So we're gonna take that very much into account this coming year. And I think there's gonna be a great deal of, of, of benefit of the doubt given by admission officers and students. Thanks, Peter. There's a question from Emma that says, unfortunately due to COVID, we're all going to be remote. So now I'm wondering how to take on this project remotely. How will colleges deal with project-based learning during these current times? Let me take the first whack at that and just say every college is approaching it differently because every college is in a different geographical area with a different disease rate and different uh, capacity to support face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, it's St. Martin's University. We're planning to still be face-to-face -face this fall uh, with a lot of precautions uh, to avoid people infecting one another and social distancing, but we're planning to still attempt to do project learning uh, close to the way we would usually do it. Um, I would invite other schools, if uh, Zach, you may or may not know uh, what's going on in your campus, but to say what you think is going on in your campus. And Peter, you may know for Harvey Mudd as well. Sure. I'll say that even within Olin, we have different courses that are taking different approaches, some of which are trying to maintain more of the in-person kind of activities. Personally, I'm involved with redesigning some classes to adapt them to an online only environment. And there are some courses that frankly, it's easier to do this than others. Things that are more software based where say we have, we have a class, a first year class on modeling and simulation. And honestly, we don't need to be in person to have projects around this. We can still Zoom with each other to have conversations about modeling. We could still have paired programming exercises to help you learn the mechanics of implementing a model. And we can still do things like write reports and come up and come up with and do the science. So I would say that for a lot of us faculty that believe in project-based learning, we are working very, very hard to try to adapt it to the realities of the situation. I think that's a terrific answer and I'd agree with everything that Zach said. I can take a whack at it as, as well. I actually did my capstone. We started our capstone in the spring because we were on co-op in the fall. So most of my capstone was actually done entirely online. Um, and we, although we had to readapt our situation, we kind of were, we were able to kind of accomplish the goals that we wanted. Unfortunately, we weren't able to fabricate anything this summer but we were able to use simulations and different types of softwares to achieve the goals that we wanted. I even had a professor 
send me parts so I could actually I used my lab my lab was my bedroom actually so I actually got to prototype parts and make sure things worked so that when I went to go implement it into another software in a PCB or a printed circuit board editor I knew that it was going to work so that's how it happened for the summer. I know Wentworth for the fall is going to a hybrid learning model. Um, I won't be there because I'll be graduating this summer, but um, I know that they're doing labs in person as well as studios in person as well. So you won't lose that project-based learning atmosphere. Anybody else have a thought on that? Uh, I'd like okay. to say something if I Please could. I think, the, um, and I answered it privately as well, um, but the hands-on component of project-based learning is only one part of it. There's the working together and the solving problems, seeing the project all the way from beginning to end. Um, and in the real world, if you work on um, rather large projects, you'll be working remotely. You could be working with someone in Pennsylvania and someone in Arizona and someone in Washington and you're gonna to need to learn to work um, remotely together. So um, it poses problems, but it also um, poses a new learning model for us too, a new thing to teach. So it's there's pluses and minuses and we just gotta make the best of our situation, so. Yeah, to tack on to what Jill said, I had a friend of mine who was on my project team who was in Alabama and we had to make sure that we met every single week to make sure that we were on tax, on, on schedule. So it's just a new challenge. You learn how to work individually, individual, individually, but also collaboratively, collaboratively with your project partners. Thanks. There's a question from Nicholas on the breakdown time between lecture and lab. And does project-based learning support learners with uh, who may struggle with traditional teaching methods? Kira, could you talk about the at Harvey Mudd, the breakdown between lecture and lab that you experienced? Yeah, definitely. So um, kind of like I said, at least at Mudd, there's usually a combination of the two, um, both with engineering classes or classes in the core curriculum. Um, you will spend time you know, two, three times a week in class um, for maybe 75 minutes about uh, doing lecture style stuff, even within the, the lectures, um, there's oftentimes a small group activity or group quizzes are really common, which is a really nice way to um, test your knowledge while also being together with other people and challenging yourself. Um, so even within the, those uh, kind of lecture times, sometimes there's room for discussion or cooperation. And then in lab, it is really helpful to then uh, probably once a week, you'll go into lab for your class and actually get to apply the things that you learned or clarify something that might not have made sense on paper once you see yourself actually hook up the circuit or whatever it may be, um, can be really eye-opening a lot of the times um, and, and make things click. So it's really nice to have that. I, I think most of my engineering courses had some type of lab component, whether it was weekly or bi-weekly um, or a project where you get to see a final application of things. And then in the core curriculum with other classes like um, chemistry or physics, you also get time in, in labs for those as well. Thanks. I'd like to just comment on the struggling with traditional teaching methods. Some people learn by seeing, some people learn by listening, some people learn by doing. So some students who struggle through uh, lecture-based classes really, really blossom when they get their hands on something. And so across the curriculum with the blend of all these teaching methods, there's generally something that each different learning style can respond to. Um, does anybody else want to add to that? I can add on as well um, with the breakdown between lecture and versus lab at Wentworth, depending on the course that you take, you'll usually spend about an hour and 20 minutes twice a week in lecture and then your labs are about two hours per week. Sometimes your labs may run over and you may have to go actually back to the lab during your free time and um, work on that as well. So 
sometimes you might actually have more lab time than is actually scheduled. And then as well, based with this, with the project-based learning and the supportive of learners, um, I am one of those types of people that actually learns by doing. So I understand the concepts a lot better when I get to put my hands on them and understand the concepts better. Like when I mentioned my analog circuit design class, it actually cemented things together in my head. And now I almost never forget anything from an my analog circuits class. I actually designed mainly in analog and I did that on my final project. So it really cements everything together for, for me anyways. Great. Well, thank you so much to our panelists for sharing this information and students and counselors. Thank you so much for joining us as well. Uh, a brief note that uh, individual colleges, Olin College, Harvey Mudd and St. Martin's have already done an individual information session, but you can check out their recordings at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM, the same place that you want to register for this program. Uh, Wentworth is doing their own individual information session later today at 3 p.m. Central. So if you're interested in hearing just from Wentworth, you can do so at 3 p.m. Central today. You can register for that at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM. As you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. We do ask for your feedback and thank you so much for joining us for this panel.